Madam President. The Senator from North Carolina. Madam President, it is with great pride that I rise today to speak about, about the Bipartisan Sportsman's Act of 2014. But before proceeding, I do want to thank Senator Murkowski for being a true partner in developing and building support for the Sportsman's Package. Working together, I am proud to say that the Bipartisan Sportsman's Act is co-sponsored by 18 Democrats, 26 Republicans, and one Independent, and is endorsed by a very diverse group of more than 40 different stakeholders. Madam President, when I became co-chair of the Congressional Sportsman's Caucus in early 2013, I was committed to advancing bipartisan legislation that would benefit our hunters, our anglers, our outdoor recreation enthusiasms, uh, enthusiasts in North Carolina and around the country. Taken together, I believe that the 12 bills that are included in this bipartisan act accomplish that objective and do so in a fiscally responsible manner. This package does not add a dime to our deficit. It actually raises $5 million over the next 10 years for deficit reduction. Outdoor recreation activities are part of the fabric of North Carolina. From the Great Smoky Mountains National Park in the west to the Cape Hatteras National Seashore in the east, North Carolinians are passionate about the outdoors, me included. Hunting, fishing, hiking are a way of life, and many of these traditions have been handed down through my own family. According to a recent report, 1.4 million sportsmen and women call my state home, and that's nearly 20% of the state's entire population. In 2011, a total of 1.6 million people hunted or fished in North Carolina. P to put that in perspective, uh, that's roughly the same amount of people that live in the Raleigh and Durham metropolitan areas. Nationwide, over 37 million people participate in these activities. That's the equivalent of the population of the state of California. And while many of these men and women live in our rural areas, they are just as likely to hail to, from some of our much more urban areas. To ensure that future generations have an opportunity to enjoy our great outdoors as we do today, this act, the Bipartisan Sportsman's Act, reauthorizes several landmark conservation programs. For example, the package includes legislation to reauthorize uh, NACWA, which is our North American Wetlands Conservation Act. This voluntary initiative provides matching grants to organizations, state and local governments, and to private landowners to restore wetlands that are critical to our migratory birds. These partnerships actually generate $3 in non-federal contributions for every dollar of federal NACA funds. And it has actually preserved more than 27 million acres of habitat over the last two decades. The benefits of this program to outdoor recreation enthusiasts nationwide cannot be overstated. The abundance of migratory birds, fish, and mammals supported by these wetlands translates into multi-billion dollar activities for hunting, fishing, and wildlife viewing. In North Carolina, NACA has advanced numerous projects to improve waterfowl habitats and to enable the acquisition of thousands of acres of land used to increasing public opportunities for these activities of hunting, fishing, and other wildlife associated recreation. Here is a photo of the, uh, from the Cape Fear region. Uh, as part of Southeastern North Carolina Wetlands Initiative, the North Carolina Coastal Land Trust, Ducks Unlimited, the North Carolina Wildlife Resource Commission, and the Nature Conservancy received a $1 million NACA grant to protect wetlands and associated uplands in this Cape Fear Arch region. Um, the federal grant then is matched by close to $3 million in non-federal funding. The Bipartisan Sportsman's Act also includes legislation sponsored by Senators Heinrich and Heller that reauthorizes the FLTFA, which is the Federal Land Transaction Facilities, uh, Facilitation Act. And that enables the Bureau of Land Management 
to sell public land to private owners, counties, and others for ranching, community development, and other projects. This land-for-land -land approach has created jobs and generated funding for the Bureau of Land Management, the U.S. Forest Service, the National Park Service, and the Fish and Wildlife Service to help those entities acquire critical inholdings of land from willing sellers. And this takes place in 11 Western states as well as Alaska. Our sportsman's package also contains Senator Wicker's bipartisan bill that will enable hunters in all states to purchase duck, stamp, duck stamps electronically. Currently, eight states are now participating in a private program uh, that enables the issuance of e-duck stamps. Since that program began, hunters in, in those eight states have actually purchased three and a half million electronic stamps. And I can personally vouch for the benefits of enabling hunters in all states to actually purchase duck stamps online. There have been occasions when members of my own family were, were unable to take a visitor hunting because we couldn't find a physical stamp. Uh, let me give you an example. Our son-in-law came to visit last year. My husband had planned to take him duck hunting, and unfortunately, three different places my husband visited had all sold out of duck stamps. So now, when my husband buys his duck stamps for the season, he purchases two or three extra, just in case a family member or a visitor uh, decides to go hunting with my husband. So enabling all hunters to purchase these duck stamps online will not cost taxpayers any money, and it will help preserve additional wildlife habitat across the country, because a portion of the proceeds of duck stamps goes to uh, protecting the habitat. Another bipartisan bill in this package reauthorizes the National Fifth, uh, Fish and Wildlife Foundation, NIFWF. This poster here actually shows the number of different uh, habitats um, that are included in uh, the National Fish and Wildlife Foundation. For example, in Florida right now, there's 658 uh, different uh, preserves and projects. Uh, the National Fish and Wildlife Foundation is a nonprofit that preserves and restores native wildlife species and habitats. Since its inception, NIFWF has awarded over 11,600 grants to more than 4,000 different organizations nationwide. Funding uh, from the National Fish and Wildlife Foundation consistently generates $3 in non-federal funding for every $1 of federal funds. One priority that NIFWF is currently working on is designed to introduce America's youth to careers in conservation. In addition to employing youth, NIFWF is also exploring ways to expand conservation employment opportunities for our nation's veterans. Our package also includes regulatory reforms and enhancements that will benefit sportsmen and women across the country. Another example, bipartisan legislation was introduced by Senator Mark Udall from Colorado. This is included, and it would enable states to allocate a greater portion of the federal Pittman-Robertson funding to create and maintain shooting ranges on public lands. Uh, there's currently a shortage of public shooting ranges across the country. In North Carolina, a principal impediment to target range development is the initial cost of acquiring the land and then constructing the facility. By reducing the non-federal match requirement from 25% currently to 10% and then allowing the states to access funds over a greater period of time, this legislation will enable the states to move forward with new public ranges. The Bipartisan Sportsman's Act will also help improve access for hunting and fishing and wildlife viewing on public lands. Right now, nearly half of all the hunters conduct a portion of their hunting activity on public lands. And a lack of access to these public lands is cited as a primary reason that people stop participating in these traditional activities. They just can't get there. Uh, the Bipartisan Sportsman's Act would uh, require that at least 1.5% or $10 million of annual land and water conservation fund money be used to improve access to our public lands. The state of North Carolina 
is home to four national forests uh, that comprise 1.25 million acres. Our outdoor recreation enthusiasts regularly have problems with actually getting access to this gorgeous place here, which is the Pisgah National Forest, which is uh, the place that I've probably spent more time backpacking uh, in this forest than any other one. This legislation will help dedicate funding to expanding the access here and on public lands across the country. Outdoor recreation activities are not only ingrained in North Carolinians' way of life, they are also huge economic drivers in my state and in states across the country. The U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service has found that hunting, fishing, and wildlife-related re recreation activities contribute $3.3 billion annually just to North Carolina's economy. Nationwide, the same report found that 90 million Americans participate in these wildlife-related recreation, uh, resulting in close to $145 billion in annual spending. That is shown on this chart, the actual economic impact for wildlife-related uh, recreation. And it, in 2011, sportsmen and women spent a total of about $34 billion on hunting, uh, which is the, right there, uh, 41 billion on fishing, and 56 billion on wildlife watching. The biggest area is actually enjoying the out, out, outdoors wildlife watching. And then an extra 14 billion on other related activities. According to the Outdoor Industry Association, all of these activities support over 192,000 jobs just in North Carolina, and a total of 6.1 million across the country. So this really does have a huge economic impact across our nation. And you know, I often say, I don't care if an idea is a Democratic idea or a Republican idea, only that it is a good idea, and I want to work behind that. And I believe that this bill embodies that spirit. The Sportsman's Act of 2014 is a balanced, bipartisan plan that is endorsed by more than 40 stakeholders, from Ducks Unlimited to the Theodore Roosevelt Conservation Partnership, and it is fiscally responsible. I urge my colleagues to approve this legislation for the benefit of our economy and the more than 90 million sportsmen and women across the country. Thank you, Madam President, and I suggest the absence of a quorum. The clerk will call the roll. Mr. Alexander. 